that's always a nice little uh, intro there, the initial portion of the Stormwind music there, isn't it? Hello everybody and welcome back. Uh, we are here in the Embassy of Stormwind once again, and possibly, I say possibly, because at this rate I wouldn't be surprised if Blizzard decides to just keep on adding more, considering that there are still quite a few other races we are still asking for. But uh, it is time to once again unlock an allied race. And of all the allied races that are available in the game, both on the Horde and the Alliance, this is the last one that I needed to unlock. I've unlocked all five on the Horde, and I unlocked the other four that you see here for the on the Alliance, except for these ones back here. The Mechanomes. I just recently, uh, earlier today, got the achievement for hitting Exalted with the Rustbolt Rebellion, and I wasn't sure if I was going to hit it, but then Blizzard recently went, you know what, we're going to do something extra for the players. So not only did they decide to extend the uh, XP buff all the way till the pre-patch of Shadowlands, which is awesome, but then they decided, you know what, we're going to make it where people who actually want to, you know, try and work on their Pathfinder stuff, we're going to make it easier for them during this time while they are uh, having to stay in inside indoors during this um, uh, quarantine and pandemic and are in isolation and such. So they came out with this other buff, Impressive Influence, Reputation Gains in the Broken Isles, Argus, Kul'Tiris, Zandalar, and Nazjatar are increased by 100%. So now you are getting double the amount of experience that you would get for all those for allied races and the Pathfinders for both BFA and Legion. And that's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. So let's just say it cut down the amount of time I was going to have to spend doing dailies in the world quest in Mechagon to unlock these guys. I had already done the Mechagonian Threat achievement uh, for doing that stuff, the quest line, then doing the quest to go uh, defeat King Mechagon in the dungeon. So, Mechagnomes. By the way, this is the heritage armor. Yeah. And behold the difference between male and female. Quite a difference, isn't it? <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Um... Uh, but yeah, those are the only two requirements in order to unlock this, so it just takes time. You just gotta be patient and you just gotta, you know, be diligent about it. And this is a great time to do it. However, it is funny, you know, that they also announced, hey, guess what? Um, you're not gonna have to do the uh, reputation thing anymore. That requirement is going away in Shadowlands. And people went, well, then, you know, they had a couple, some different reactions like, oh, man, I did all that for nothing, you know. To which I say, you know there are other things you can get, like from the vendors and such, if you reach Exalted with a a rep, right? With a faction? That's part of the reason you do the rep grinds, is not just to unlock certain things like Allied Races, but to get access to certain things from the vendors. You know, really nice things, you know. Anyways, it's like, I'm just saying, kind of think about why else you would do that. So... Anyways, the Mechanomes! Though they once sought to mechanize themselves completely, the Mechanomes now seek a balance between flesh and steel. Emerging from years of isolation on Mechagon, they bring both ingenuity and aptitude to the Alliance. So, racial traits. Hyper Organic Light Originator. Summon duplicates to distract your enemies. Kind of sounds like the mirror image of uh, a talent that mages have. Combat Analysis. Gradually gain power as you analyze an enemy in combat. This sounds interesting. <laughs> I really find this interesting. Like, some of these, I really want to see them in action. See how good they actually are. Mastercraft, you act as a personal crafting station. <laughs> I love this because, in my mind, I'm thinking this not only helps you if you're wanting to do that, but it also helps out any friends you have. Party mates, guild mates are like, hey... Can I use you as a crafting station? <laughs> Skeleton Pinky, you're able to pick locks. So I guess rogues are no longer the only ones that can just pick locks now, I guess. <laughs> Though if you make a mecha mecha gnome rogue, it's like, okay, you know. 
and then emergency failsafe, automatically heal when you are badly injured. This sounds really good, but you, I need to see like the actual specific details of how it works. Like how much healing are we talking about and how badly injured are we talking about? I need specifics, so. I will also let you guys know that even to this very moment, I am having a very difficult time deciding what class to make my mecha gnome. And I'll go over that once we actually finish unlocking them. For now, while, what do you say we actually do the quest line to unlock them? I, I'll i be honest, I pretty much know nothing. I haven't looked up anything about the, this quest line, so I don't really know what's going to happen or what to expect. So, Patience is Hi, Asa. The highest virtue. Excellent timing. Kelsey's Steel Spark has been sending communications to the capital cities looking for aid. Megatork's condition is quite dire, and time is of the essence. Hurry to Boralus Harbor. She will be watching for you. Okay. So, obviously this takes place after the events of Battle of the Tsar Lore, where we are now having to uh, check on how uh, Megatork is doing. Because he got pretty banged up uh, after his uh, battle with the Horde in the raid, so like it, like when you even when you do it on Alliance, I even showed this in my uh, Alliance playthrough. Like they will ask, "How's Mechatork doing?" And they're like, "Well, he's, you know, like he's stable, but he's badly hurt." Like I think they maybe even said he was either in a coma or unconscious or something. So yeah, Mechatork is, he hasn't been, like, in the best of conditions <laughs> since, uh, the Battle of the Tsar lore. So, make sure that, uh, I'm actually tracking this. Now let's see if Kelsey is still at my ship in the harbor here. I'd say it's my ship, because that's just how it feels at this point. Like, you guys remember back in Warlords where we were the commanders? Like, you know, of the forces there in uh, Draenor, of the, our garrisons, they addressed us as Commander. I liked that. And it just feels like at this point we should still have that rank Hero, within the, the faction. Be better. Is fading fast. He is? Yeesh. I guess he's his condition was more serious than I thought. Huh. She actually looks a little different. Like, it looks like she took off her goggles. Ready huh. for action. You're just in time. Mechatork's pod is powering down. We're no longer able to hear him speak. His pulse has slowed in spite of the best efforts of Kul'tir and healers. I have an idea, but I'm going to need your help. Meet me at Proudmore Keep. We must go soon. I'll be waiting. The Tide Sages are trying to heal him at Proudmore Keep. Meet me there. I'll meet you there. I guess it's a rainy day here in Boralus. Rumor has it that the gangs have got hold of some nasty Azerite explosives. Wait. So, he's just been in this... Oh, it's it's the escape pod. So has he been like stuck in this pod the entire time since the raid? Just trying to recover and heal? Huh. New orders. What we're about to do may not be an approved plan. We'll just have to ask for forgiveness later. Oh gosh, Kelsey, what are you about to have us do? I believe there is a way to help Mechatork, but some may not be 100% on board. The Mecha Gnomes have advanced techniques in biomechanical repair and improvements. If there is even a chance that they can help him, we have to try. There are some Mecha Gnomes who are sending supplies out to the island from a dock in Hook Point. No one will notice one more piece of cargo. We need to rep reroute one of their homing copters. Will you please help me get Mechatork's pod to Mechagon? Even if the Mechanomes can't help him, they could power the pod long enough for me to find someone who can. OK. 
Okay. I mean, this doesn't seem like that bad of a plan, really. But then again, I think Kelsey is just far more used to doing things, like, secretively. You know, being her being part of the covert ops as opposed to doing things diplomatically. But then again, she's also trying to, you know, she's anticipating some people will not be on board, you know, in, in the political sense. So... And she's like, we don't have time to waste on politics. Let's just get it and do it without asking permission. But then again, like I said, she's part of the covert ops. This is kind of her style. She's used to this. All right. Send his pod to Mechagon. Perfect. The homie copter will take him directly to Mechagon. I probably should have told Erasmus to expect us. Let's try to get there ahead of the pod. I mean, at this point, I'm pretty sure Erasmus would be completely fine with it. I think what Kelsey may also be concerned about is the people in... Well, I was going to say Nomragon. Nomragon! But let's be let's remind ourselves, they're not really there. They're more so in Ironforge. But... I guess we have to point out that there is a distinction between regular gnomes and mecha gnomes, I guess for a reason, but really is that such a bad thing? It's almost like making a distinction between regular orcs, you know, with green skin that we've had in the game. That's what I mean when I say regular orcs, and maghar orcs. It's like, you know. <laughs> now, let's be honest, some maghar orcs do have a tendency to use that as an insult. Heck, even Agra did that to Thrall in Cataclysm by... I think she actually called him a green skin. Which, when you think about it, that's kind of a... <laughs> that almost sounds like a racist thing to say. And that was Agra saying that to Thrall. <laughs> For the record, I've never liked Agra. Not really. But as far as I know, there's nothing like that between the gnomes and the mecha gnomes. Why would there? To me, it's more so, it's not about like, I can understand the Maghar orcs being that because they would see the green-skinned regular orcs and be like, you're the ones who willingly drank that demon blood and corrupted yourselves and brought this on our people and, you know, yada, 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 and all that stuff. So that I can understand. There, there would be some resentment and such there, some tension between those two races. But between the gnomes and the mecha gnomes? I mean, especially since Prince Erasmus and those mecha gnomes are not really wanting to do what King Mechagon was doing. See, I can understand that towards Mechagon's, you know, or King Mechagon's forces because of how they were basically forcing gnomes to become full cybernetic robotic mecha gnomes. That there wasn't a blend between the two. There was just... We're going to get rid of the curse of flesh and turn you all into robots. You know, I can understand that, but Prince Erasmus has proven that he is nothing like his father. For good. For, you know, in the good sense. So I think Kelsey may be uh, thinking a little too much on this or a little too concerned about this than she really needs to. But then again, this is the Alliance. They have had a history of racism. The Resistance is always in need of resources. You can aid us. Yes, yes, I know, Rasmus. I already did that earlier today. Have you considered an upgrade? <laughs> All right. 
It would be my pleasure to give aid to the most esteemed High Tinker Mechatork. I figured the two of them would get along. She will inform us of the materials she requires. Right behind you. Interested in a new project? I think I can modify one of our existing devices to give access to Gelbin Mechatork without disturbing his life-preserving functions. There are some items that I do need you to procure from the nearby Vector of the Heaps. You will find scrap bots and scrap hounds. There, these would be a fine source of spare parts for my construction project. The outflow is home to some particularly slimy friends. From them, you will find excellent ingredients for the heat resistance lubricant that we need. I will oversee the construction of the units to open the escape pod. I estimate the chances of crushing the occupant at sub-50%. Never tell me the odds. <laughs> uh, so, by the way, yeah, I've also been realizing I'm going to have to spend some time just staying here and just farming spare parts. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there are essences here that are actually pretty good for, you know, all three roles. Tank, healer, and DPS. The one I'm trying to get for this spec is this one right here. Now, I've already got the rank 2 on one of my other characters. That's the character that I've done the achievements for to unlock this race. Um, but in order to get the rank 3 version... I would need, like, 20 spare crates. I have plenty of uh, these things here. But the spare crates? Yeah, you gotta spend time collecting lots and lots of spare parts if you want to make a lot that many uh, crates. Um, of course, the way the system works now with the essences, once you get rank 3 of one roll, you can be able to then use Echoes and Ilotha to just simply purchase the rank 3 for the other rolls. So I would be able to get the... Uh, tank spec one here uh, with Echoes and Iolotha, which I've I think is supposed to be a pretty good one as well. And then there's another one for the healing spec as well, so. But, lots of spare parts are going to be needed for that, so let me make sure I have this tracking here, so let's see. I'm out of range. Looks like it's gonna be a while before these things actually drop the items I need. I can't attack that target. Oh, there's my uh, twisted appendage. So, in case you're curious, I recently, I'm up to 469 now, by the way. I recently, yeah, I'm up to 51, you know, well, actually, I have a base corruption of 111, but I have, uh, my cloak is now up to rank 14. So, 50 corruption resistance from that, plus the essences, extra, you know, so I've got uh, 60 corruption resistance. In case you're curious, what corrupted gear do I have? Well, I do have this one, which is a tier 1. It's not the best one, it's like the weakest one you can get of Twilight Devastation. Uh, though, obviously, it would do more damage with the tank spec. But I also got this, which is the tier 3 of... Uh, Twisted Appendage, which uh, summons a tentacle which mind flays your target. 20,000 shadow damage every second for 10 seconds. Uh, 66 corruption, so usually the higher uh, corruption that of how strong it is will usually also be like really high corruption levels. So you gotta make sure that your cloak is pretty good in terms of uh, having a lot of resistance so you can be able to equip it. So yeah, I'm gonna be dealing with things like Pretty large eyes of corruption, and of course the uh, thing from beyond. But man, the damage that you get from those is pretty nice. Oh hey, see, there's my uh, Twilight Devastation getting blocked right there. Right, two, six. 
I'm hoping to avoid interfering with some players who are also perhaps, you know, defeating these to try and farm stuff. But usually these things will have a tendency to spawn pretty quickly. And there's always a ton of them. There's like no shortage of them in this area. Doesn't say I can get the stuff I need from those. Ah, here we go. These things. There we go. It's too far away. There's the thing from beyond. Yep. I can't attack that target. Summoned another one. Yep. Now, on their own, it's not that bad, but having those interfere, like, during a big, like, raid boss fight is not fun. Especially when you have the next higher level, yeah, the next higher level of corruption, which is, if you are struck by the thing from beyond, you will immediately be afflicted by both grasping tendrils and the eye of corruption. Yeah. So it can kind of stack that and I just make it that. really, really tough. So I had to kind of like cleanse one of my other corrupted items in order to kind of make it less than 60. And of course, working on the cloak because I can even get it uh, higher corruption resistance. In fact, I believe they announced, Blizzard announced that they're going to be upping the amount of resistance that you can get for your cloak to something like 65 corruption resistance, I believe I heard correctly so and of course you know i'm at, at this point i'm able to also five chest clear the horrific visions pretty easily of course people say it's pretty easy on a demon hunter but it's mainly due to getting the other special upgrades that you can unlock that restore your sanity every time you take down uh it's tough enemies within away. the visions so i'm gonna be testing out actually going through with the one mass that I do have. So, now I can try and get some more mementos to get some more upgrades for that. Plus, I had the quest, which it, the last quest here for the last rank, which is get eight pages from the lost areas, which are the two toughest areas in these visions. So I'm going to, if I want to shorten, you know, do this as efficient as possible, I'll have to do four uh, full runs of this, which is not that bad at this point. The last run I did, I didn't even have to use my Sandy Restoring Orb once because I was going through taking down enemies so fast, especially the elites, that it was just, um, it felt like I wasn't have to be concerned about my Sandy at all. I need to get close. Which is what made me think, you know what, maybe I should actually try doing this with that mask I have. Now, I've never attempted a run with a mask, so... It's gonna be a little interesting to... Uh, Can't attack that. ...see what that's like for the first time, but... <laughs> okay, just need one more part. I'm out of range. <laughs> the one thing I don't like about the Warglaive is that it then bounces to targets you don't want it to attack. It's like, oh, come on. But hey, look, there's my uh, appendage just mind flaying enemies to, to help defend me. In fact, I had two summon. Wow. And it does a lot of damage. So that's why if you, you see, you'll see me very cor have that corrupted look. And man, I've, I just love how they designed this. Like visually, it's just an aw awesome look. The fact that it affects various different uh, things on your gear as well. It's just such a cool like visual design that they did. I love it. All right, Warren, I got your parts. Yes, 
Yes, yes, these will do. Excellent work. Champion, we have an emergency that demands immediate attention. Nobody's perfect. What is it? One of our defenders saw the Trogs take out the homing copter carrying Mechatork's pod. Since we started bringing goods in from Tiriscard, they have been a real thorn in our side. Piston, a very promising young inventor, has a vehicle able to help handle the ta this task. Meet his crew down in Bondo's yard. Please hurry and retrieve the pod. I'm not sure what will happen to Gelbin if they break it open. Ahem, uh, we would not be upset if you did a little uh, beach cleanup while you were there. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Oh, speaking of horrific visions, I may just, I may as well just go ahead and show this off on camera. Hee <laughs> hee, male muncher dropped. <laughs> it is a pretty, pretty gross looking mount, but it basically moves in the same way that the uh, serpents, uh, the cloud serpents, do from Pandaria. Ah, uh, yes. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. H HK. Ugh. My humbug may not be pretty, but she's got it where it counts. Uh-huh, sure. I'm sorry, do you... What? Uh... You know what? I'm, I'm not gonna ask. I am not even gonna ask. Just keep up, okay? Yeah, he will keep up. By the way, I made sure to turn off Rare Scanner before... I did this because I knew I was probably going to have to come to Mechagon, and I knew it was going to be going off a lot because, it, as you can see with all the, the chests on my minimap, it goes off every time there's a chest that spawns or if there's a rare that spawns. That's kind of what this area basically is. Get away from that pod! Alright, let's get rid of that eye. We've acquired the pod. Back to Rustbolt. There we go. Oh, so I guess he just, uh, oh, he did. He picked up the pod. It's, uh, you see that? It's right there behind him. You take care of that pod now. again for any vehicular needs <laughs> what can I do thanks piston I hope the poor guy didn't get shaken around too much in there construction proceeds as scheduled Christy will address the occupants biomechanical integrity awaiting user input <laughs> better stronger less dead King Mechagon may have been crazy, but his minions did have exemplary robotic creation capabilities. There are few res residual creations wandering Mechagon refusing to accept King Mechagon's dethroning. The logical conclusion to defeat is withdrawal. If one remains operational, some do not excel at logic. They currently bear the latest in te technical advancement. I believe retrieving specific pieces from these units would greatly benefit our recovery endeavor. Collect the... Accelerator... And flux from the erratic units. Hold on a second. Repairing the occupant will require okay. the most advanced hardware. I will await your return. You do that, Christy. I was anticipating they were about to say, go into the dungeon and get this. And I'm like, oh, no. Of course. 
the direction I'm flying, he happens to be there. I hate you. I hate you so much. I better land. If he gets to 10 stacks, I'm gonna he's gonna start attacking. Alright. Once you land, it just resets, so it's fine. Hmm. Aha! You! I need to get closer. Get over here. I can't attack that target. There we go. Ah, okay. I have to go to different areas for the for the pieces. Huh. Submit for mechanization. Attack that. Okay, and over there. Hmm. Oh, and for those of you watching who perhaps are seeing me click on some of my buttons and just kind of flipping out on that, I am in the process of actually uh, acquiring, like, you know, a mouse with more buttons, um, a more efficient keyboard and such. So I'm going to try my best to, like, move more towards just doing more keybinds and such as opposed to the whole, you know, hybrid thing that I do of... of you know, using some keybinds while also doing some clicking, but I'm gonna try and fix that and work on that. So, so you can just kind of calm down on that for those of you who, I don't know, just go a little nuts over that. State your intent. Barely a scratch on them. A couple of upgrades, and you could do that in half the time, you know? Yeah, yeah, so you've told me. These components require modification. In the meantime, Erasmus has requested your assistance. What is Erasmus? Proceed with your inquiry. Speak to one of, to some of the gnomes in Mechagon, enhanced or otherwise. Of my people, ask what they hope for in a leader of our kind. Of our new friends, what ask what they ap appreciate most about their current leader. From what I've he learned thus far, the High Tinker has always led his people by necessity. He never sought or desired the crown. I believe that the gnomes should be united once again. I seek, seek a solution that will m be most amenable to all. Will you gather the information that I need? The data you acquire should prove invaluable to my calculations. That's a long list of people to talk to. Well, I do like this, though. He wants to hear from his people what they want in a leader. Because, of course, he would want to be that because he does not want to follow in the footsteps of his father. We saw what kind of, kind of, uh, yeah. What kind of tyrant he became, so. I acknowledge you. Peggy. What do you want in a leader? Challenge your assumptions. If someone is willing to fight for us, to protect us, I will follow them to the Blasted Lands and back again. A good leader would give us ownership and accountability. They would not micromanage us. They would have courage and honesty. They would trust us and build us up. 
Why, Galvin, he is the most magnanimous, big-hearted, big-brained, big-eared man to wear the heavy mantle of leading us wily gnome folk. I think that young man has done a right good job of it. I'm sorry. Loris? Did you say something? When do you want in a leader? Every problem has a solution. I would just like for someone to help us clean this up, this mess. Gelbin notices that the the bleh, notices those that put in more effort, care more, try harder. He sees those that just make things better. Quimby. It's a good day for an upgrade. And no, this is not Mayor Quimby. <laughs> ah, yes, vote Quimby. No, we had a Mayor Quimby reference back in the Death Knight starter zone. Not here. So what makes a good leader? Challenge your assumptions. When one is as shiny as me, some can't see past the sparkle. A good leader is not fooled by superficial things. A good leader he is there for their people. Want them... To not be a uh, dastard. <laughs> Gelbin is a, is strong of heart, and he's not afraid to say what I he is really on his mind. I like how they'll talk, you know, what they want, and then they bring up uh, Gelbin. It's a I good day for an upgrade. What makes a good leader? Upgrade is worth giving a sharp-minded problem solver that I can go to when my inventions go awry. I want a leader that helps me realize my value in our community and doesn't just see us as tools. Gelbin creates things that make the world better. He keeps us moving. He keeps us safe. No one can look through the gnomes with Mechatork before us. He listens and shares ideas from his prolific mind. He can untangle a mess that seems insurmountable without losing his cool. He plays a mean harmonica. <laughs> Elia? You have acquired my what do you want in a leader? Good maintenance. Well, they must be at least as brilliant as I, or is it me? Elvin is the greatest inventor. You need no other information. Chromie? Why, hello. In my travels to the many possible futures... Oh my gosh, Chromie. Take care of yourself out there. Not now. Hey! Steward? What do... Why do you appreciate Gelbin Mechatol? You have a great day now. He shares responsibilities. He is one of us. He is more than a leader. He is our friend. There is nothing that Mechatork would not do to help a fellow gnome. His loyalty to us is to us first, the Alliance second, as it should be. Mechatork's trust brings confidence. I don't know how to explain it better. When he tells me that I can, I can do a thing, you know what? I realize I can. There is none I respect more. A good leader should have very strong eyebrows. His are very commanding. A lot of interesting answers there. So, Rasmin, I have your data. Excellent, excellent. These are the results that I was hoping for. You have strengthened my theory. Intriguing. Your assistance is appreciated. It, please share this data with Christy for analysis. What is your inquiry? We now have a baseline of who Mechatork is. Looks like there could be some room for improvement. Your assistance is needed to get him stabilized and synchronized before removing him from his pod. Please position yourself by the synchroscope. I will make adjustments. You will need to fire the machine when I call. Excellent! Now we use the data to synchronize the units with the subject's neural oscillations. Fire the synchroscope! Uh, 
Oh, this thing here. Amazing gamma amplitude in this sequence. With a few adjustments, we can enhance his logical reasoning tenfold. We like him just the way he is, though. Too much logic, and he could lose his heart. A seemingly frivolous priority, given the opportunity to achieve perfection. But if you insist, I will retain his prior functionality, flaws and all. Uh, and there we see one of the uh, issues between the two uh, groups here. You know, the mechanome seeing, like, I'll like, get rid of the flaws and achieve perfection, and the gnome's like, no, no. That's, you know, let him keep, you know, his heart. All right. Delvin. Awaiting user input. Your button-pushing skills are commendable. We are fortunate you, that you were here. Gee, thanks. We saw a flare near Junkwat Depot. The retrieval team has made it out with the power source. We are now forever safe from King Mechagon's... Annihilatron. Quite the name. Its heart will serve a new purpose. This is great news. However, the flare means that they have company. Your help will be needed to extra extricate the team and retrieve the spark reactor. Please move with haste. We are so close to completion. Hang on, Kelsey. I'm on my way. Sure you don't never mind. Never mind. Kelsey's fine. She doesn't need my help. She can handle this. Clearly. Besides, we have a King of the Gnomes to save. Here you go, Galvin. The reactor is locked in. Flip, you're up! Excellent. I just need a moment to calibrate the circuit. Done. Go ahead and flip the switch. Oh, sorry, Gelman. Are we about to do the Frankenstein moment? Flip the switch. Yes, master. Well. Life. Life, do you hear me? Give my creation life! <laughs> I had to do it. Okay, what is it? Oh, this thing. Resuscitation. Uh, did it work? Gilbin! <laughs> Where am I? What happened? The attack on Dazara Lore. You have my sincerest gratitude, Prince Erasmus. As do you, Kelsey. And you, Champion. We couldn't have done it without the people of Mechagon. And I think I know a way we can repay the favor. Proceed with your inquiry. So I guess uh, Mechatork is uh, Iron Man now, <laughs> given the uh, the uh, the chest piece that he's got there. Very Tony Stark-esque, but wouldn't it be fitting? Isn't it fitting that Mechatork would, of course, be the Tony Stark of this setting? Just think about that. <laughs> I'm, j I'm just saying, it works, really. It really does. Oh, hey, Grizek. I am quite...
quite pleased. With a 40% chance of success, I was not sure that the variables would actually would reconcile in our favor. It was a serendipitous sequence of events. Hey, hold on a second. Hold on. He's just wandering around here without his uh, cover. I appreciate you helping me keep a low profile on the trip over. Not too happy to find the horde here, but I'm at least grateful that it's Gazla. When in doubt, Kelvin. It out. After everything that the Mechanomes have done for us today, it is our duty to return the favor. Let us clear out the rogue creations that remain in Mechagon. With their home returned, Prince Erasmus and their, his people will have a brilliant path forward. With this team, we will make short work of the remaining King Mechagon loyalists. Let me know when you're ready to roll out. Many rogue bots still roam the city. Any assistance you can provide toward their removal would be most appreciated. Well then, let's recycle some scrap. Oh yeah, these two are going to get along really well. Oh, are we going into the dungeon area? Like as a separate instance? We'll make quick work. Yup. Mechagon City. Ready when you are. Oh, hey! I need... There's another player here. I need to target... Warning! Warning! Look, let's just say I've been... I've done this dungeon a few more times now where I'm a lot more familiar with it. Especially all the various different things you encounter in here. Uh huh. Resistance is futile. Huh. I didn't get credit for that. I guess that guy did, and the, the two of us didn't get credit for it at all. I guess more players just come in here to join the this, this same instance that are also trying to do the same thing. So, as I mentioned, with this rep gain, a lot of people are trying to work on this, even though some people are like saying, oh, you don't have to do it because they're just gonna get rid of it. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like, you know, just to be able to, there's nothing wrong with just going in and doing it during the time when it's, it's, you know, just kind of part of the normal requirements. Hey, look, we have the two different mounts. This Guardian of Azeroth right there, man, he does a lot. second So take a moment to repair. I have many lucky dudes uh, you like. <laughs> many farewell. Well, fancy seeing you here. That was exciting. The world just got a little bigger, my friend. 
Now that Mechagon City has been cleared of its remaining dangers, it may once again be a place of peace and prosperity for gnomes and mechanomes alike. It is time for me to speak with Prince Erasmin regarding the future of our peoples. It is my sincere hope that we will forge an alliance that will last for generations to come. When you are ready, please join us at the High Tinker Toy for a special address. I can hardly believe my eyes. The fabled city of Mechagon. Most impressive, Prince Erasmus. Thank you. Sadly, for too long, this city has symbolized the schism my father created between my people and the rest of humanity. For all our upgrades, we mechanomes now realize that we are still gnomes at heart. If you will have us, it is our wish to reunite with Nomragon. And I would be honored if you, High Tinker, would lead us, Prince Erasmus. It is I who am honored. I will accept your request with one condition. You must promise to stand beside me as my counselor and my friend. Absolutely, High Tinker. Come, let us address our people together. By the way, about the Nomragon thing, you guys still need to go reclaim that. I'm just saying. Like, er like Erasmin, perhaps you could help them not just retake Nomergon, but fix it, kind of clean it. You know, of all that radiation, everything that happened. <laughs> I'm just saying. They've kind of gone too long without having retaken Nomergon back. Gnomes and mechanomes. Today is a joyous occasion many centuries in the making. The reunification of Nomergon and Mechagon. Just as the citizens of Mechagon thrive from the union of flesh and steel, so too will our union bring us success and prosperity. At the behest of Prince Erasmin, it is my privilege to announce the ruler of an undivided gnomekind. Galbin Mechatork, King of the Gnomes! There's always time to tinker. This has truly been a glorious day for both gnomes and mechanomes. We could not have done it without you. Reporting for duty. We wanted to save a life, and we have accomplished so much more. We really couldn't have done it without you. I'm so excited about the future of all gnome kind. Head back to Stormwind and share the good news. This will give us a Mechagon Mechano Strider. And, of course, unlocking them as an allied race. So let's see. Teleport me back to Stormwind! It's good to see you. Outstanding results. I will share your news with the leaders of the Alliance. I look forward to collecting some new toys. <laughs> Behold. But then again, it's it's very similar to the mount that you used to that you could get as a regular gnome as well. So, not too surprised by this. I mean, after all, it's very mechanome. Any mechanical mounts you would have? In fact, I think I can show them. Yeah, right here. Mechano, mechano Strider. See that? Yeah. So basically, like, any mechanical mounts you have, it's like, it just fits if you're going to use a mechanome at this point. Like, here's an unpainted one. Swift Yellow mechan Mechano Strider. There's the Mecha Spider that I got. There's the Mechano Cat. I really like that. There's the Wonder Wing that you get for the Pathfinder. And now, this. Alright, so now let's head on over and take a look at what it's like to create a Mechanome. So, there's a number of different uh, character creation things. So, first off... Before we get to that, let's discuss uh, the, you know, I've already gone over some of this, the racial stuff 
with the mechanomes. So, class selections. So you can either be a warrior, you can be a hunter, which has that mechan mechanical dog as a starting pet. You could be a rogue, which is kind of funny because you automatically get a racial ability to be able to lockpick. So it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> you get the same ability, you know, it, it almost feels like there's no reason not, like you don't have to pick a rogue for that reason because you already have that. Anyways, you can be a priest, you can be a mage, you can be a warlock, you can be a monk. And if you have uh, purchased Shadowlands, a Death Knight. I ima I just imagine the Lich King's reaction. He sees a Mechanome like looking like that as a Death Knight. And he's just like, "Did I really need to add them to my ranks?" <laughs> I'm just, he's just looking to like, maybe this was a bad decision. <laughs> so. As I said earlier, I have been so indecisive on what class to make them. But I also want to show you guys some of the character creation stuff. Because you'll notice as I was going back and forth, there's some different things you can have. Look at the amount of modifications that you can be able to do here. So obviously, you know, skin color, you know, a very common character creation. Face, also common. Actually, it's, yeah, here we go. A little hard to see the face under those other things. Hairstyle, another very common selection thing here. Yes, the pigtails! They continue, except now they have cogs as the, as the um, hair braids holding the, the pigtails there. You can't have a gnome without pigtails. At least a, a female gnome. That's just, everybody knows that. Very common. That's a very cute hairstyle. Hair color, another very common um, character creation. Now, this is where you get very unique with the mecha gnomes. Modifications, arm upgrades, and leg upgrades. So, modifications. Ears. Different kinds of ear styles you want. Eyes. Goggles. <laughs> I mean, you can basically... You know, this reminds me so much of in Star Wars The Old Republic when you could make a cyborg and you had all these various different types of selections because you were a cyborg so of course you had tons of different modification choices to make here arm upgrades so you can be able to change what type of arm you want here ones with fingers uncovered armor just spare parts there just kind of ching, ching, clamps claws there leg upgrades it's gonna be a little hard to see with her being zoomed in but just either covered or uncovered very interesting choices here. But I like that. I like that there is all these other extra cosmetic. And there's supposed to be more coming in Shadowlands. Maybe not necessarily for Mecha Gnomes, but for numerous other races. There's going to be many more different character creation cosmetic options coming. And I've, and I've been joking that there's going to be a line of players when these go live just at the barbershop in like Dalaran and the different cities. They're all going to be in the barber shops because they're all going to be wanting to mess around with the different uh, appearances for their characters. And I'm going to be doing the same thing. I'm going to be like, to the barber shop, let's go for all my characters. So, ah, I'm so torn on what class I want to be. I've actually been considering another monk, even though I only have two monks and they're both Pandarans because of course there are, but I don't know. Like, I already have a few warriors. I already have a few hunters. I have a couple of rogues. I have a couple of priests. My regular gnome is a priest, who I haven't leveled yet. If I if I do, or if I just you know use a boost on her, then I'll be able to show you guys the heritage armor gnome quest line that uh, they have. I have a few mages. I have a couple of warlocks, and then of course I have several death knights. Like, the more I think about it, the more I think a, a monk may not be such a bad choice. Because <laughs> you can go with the different roles. I could be able to, uh, you know, work on any of those roles. Hmm. I think that is probably what I'm going to go with. 
I may even try to use this character to actually learn how to play uh, or to try and get better at and get more practice in as a brewmaster in terms of lower level play, but we'll see. Or I could just do more Windwalker, who knows. So I think I, so I'm going to go ahead and take a moment to work on making my character and then I will show you guys the whole intro portion of what happens when you make it. And then we'll go over the little small, take a look, closer look at the details of the racial abilities when we have made our character. So, so uh, just hang tight for a moment. I'll be right back. We oh, mechanomes sorry, spent years in isolation, tirelessly enhancing our bodies and minds. But this relentless quest for perfection nearly brought us to ruin. Now we realize that balance is the key to happiness. We can improve ourselves without losing our individuality in the process. It is time to leave Mechagon and rejoin our gnomish cousins. Together, we will forge a brighter future for the Alliance. I almost considered going without actual like face modifications, but I was thinking, you know, if we have this ability to be able to analyze our opponents, like I could see this like, you know, analyzing opponent with these kinds of eyes here. So I decided to go without the antenna as an, as kind of a um, like the antenna could get in the way of certain things, whereas this you can be able to just kind of have be more efficient. I like efficiency. And I like having fingers as well, so. Plus a bit of extra armor, so. Anyways. I'll obviously deal with, like, character stuff, you know, my title and, you know, talents. However, let's take a moment. Of course, as a monk, I'll be able to level even faster because of being able to go um, to the place in Pandaria and get enlightenment, which is so good. So anyways, let's look at the... Mm, actual racial abilities are here okay so hold on <laughs> let me get my uh my act my bars here start you know so i can be able to actually add them here there's the mount all right huh. so this is a three minute cooldown summon organic light duplicates to distract your foes behold duplicates I could see that being a useful ability as a brewmaster. Like, hey, here's a couple others to, you know, give your attention to. Skeleton Pinky. Opening of locked chests and doors that require a skill level of up to 100. Interesting. <laughs> Common in Gnomish. What is the Gnomish language? Racial Passive. You gather and analyze combat data every five seconds, increasing your primary stat by one, stacking up to ten times. The data decays while out of combat. Obviously a level 20, I think, the, you know, I would imagine that this might scale, but then again, Blizzard may not have this scale just because, oh, we don't want racials to be too strong, you know, because then people would just roll the race just to, you know, have the powerful passive or whatever. Pa racial passive. When you fall below 20% health, you heal for 15% of your maximum health. This effect cannot occur more than once every two and a half minutes. Hmm. It's like a talent that uh, some other classes have, like, like Shaman. Racial passive. Mastercraft. You function as a personal blacksmithing anvil, cooking fire, and mining forge. In addition, your limbs include every profession Cool. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, then. Hello, Megatork. Is there something on your mind? As High Tinker and leader of both Gnomes and Mechanomes, I am proud to welcome you to the Alliance. A world of adventure awaits you beyond the walls of Mechagon City. When you are ready, step up Step on the teleporter. Ambassador Moorgard will be awaiting your arrival at the Stormwind Embassy. There will be many potential avenues of advancement available to you. Choose wisely, improve, and remember to share your data. Perseverance is the true blueprint to success. I love it. I love that it's amount that we are like controlling with like joysticks. Doom, 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 doom. <laughs> what can I do for you? Ah, there you are. Uh, we've been expecting or expecting you. Welcome to Stormwind, Monk. King Anduin Rin invites you to explore our fair city. Say, you look like someone who enjoys the nightlife. We have many popular taverns and a vibrant music scene. Ah, but that can wait. Seek out the hero's call board in the city to find where adventure lies and then speak to your emissary. Have a pleasant day. Oh, and a friendly word of advice. Best not to attempt to upgrade people without their consent. Some don't take too kindly to that. For the Alliance. Welcome, friend. I am King Anduin Rin. As a new member of the Alliance, I wish to greet you personally. These are troubled times for Azeroth. In the days to come, you will face many trials, fight many foes. Know that you are never alone against the darkness, for the Alliance stands with you. I look forward to hearing of your progress. Something tells me we will speak again soon. Awaiting your input. You will be an excellent representative of what it means to be a mechanome. Stay shiny out there, friend. Experiment before you implement. The world has become a much bigger place. I hope you enjoy discovering it, mechaniques. And that is it, everybody. That is the quest line to unlock the mechanome. So, I believe, with the exception of the Nightborn, I still am so sorry that I did not get that, because that was a really good one. Um, I believe I have now shown you guys all the allied races, uh, their quest lines and such to unlock them, as that is the last one that I need to unlock. So, I hope you enjoyed, uh, and I hope this helps in case you plan on doing the quest line and such and unlocking them yourself. And I will see you guys next time.